Assalamu alaikum dear students today our topic is the temporomandibular joint in this topic we will study the type of joint that which type of joint is the temporomandibular joint we'll, we will be studying the various ligaments attached to this joint and the various muscles moving this joint we will be studying the relations of this giant and we then will be studying the neurovascular supply of this giant. Tempo as the name indicate mandibular giant. It is a giant formed by the temporal bone and the mandibular bone. So the temporal bone of the cranium and the mandibular bone forms this giant. This is called the temporal mandibular giant. We know that mandible is a single bone and it has two heads and the cranium has two articular surfaces for the two heads of the mandibles. So two temporomandibular giants are formed, one on the right side and other on the left side of the body. The movement of one giant cannot occur alone. When one giant moves, the other giant will also move. There, will, uh, there must be com concomitant movement of the other giant. So, there are a lot of diseases in which this temporomandibular giant is involved. So, the temporomandibular giant is the most frequently used giant. So, it is involved in many diseases. Studying the temporomandibular giant is very important. We will now study one by one the different learning objectives. That is, first we will study which type of giant it is. We have said that temporomandibular giant is a giant between the temporal bone and the mandible. The type of giant. It is a synovial giant of condylar variety. The articular surfaces, these are the articular surfaces. The upper articular surface and the lower articular surface. The upper articular surface is formed by the articular tubercle and articular fossa. This is articular fossa and this is articular tubercle. This is also called the mandibular fossa. And this is also called the articular eminence. So either we call it articular tubercle or articular eminence and we call it articular fossa or we call it mandibular fossa. So this is the upper articular surface the upper articular surface is concave convex from behind forwards. It is concave convex from behind forward. The lower articular surface is formed by the head of the condyle of the mandible. This is the head of the condyle of the mandible. So the lower articular surface is formed by the head of the condyle of the mandible. This surface is elliptical in shape. These articular surfaces are covered by fibrocartilage. These articular surfaces are covered by fibrocartilage and they are not covered by hyaline cartilage. So these, this giant is a typical synovial giant. This is the giant cavity. The giant cavity is divided into two compartments. This compartment and this compartment by a disc called the articular disc. The articular disc divides the giant cavity into an upper compartment and a 
lower compartment. The upper compartment is called the upper menisco temporal compartment. This is the upper menisco temporal compartment and this is the lower menisco mandibular compartment. This is menisco mandibular compartment and this is menisco temporal compartment. The upper compartment permits gliding movements while the lower compartment permits gliding as well as rotational movements. Now we will talk about the articular disc. This is the sagittal section through the temporomandibular joint. So the articular disc look like this. The articular disc is an oval plate of fibrocartilage and it has two surfaces the upper surface which fits into the articular surfaces of the temporal bone and a lower surface which fits into the articular surface of the mandible. The upper surface of the articular disc is concave convex from before backwards. It is concave convex and fits well into the articular eminence and the articular fossa of the temporal bone. The lower surface of the disc is concave and fits well into the convex head of the mandible. At the periphery, the disc is attached to the fibrous capsule. It is firmly attached to the fibrous capsule. We will continue with the articular disc. This is the articular disc. This is the upper articular surf surface of the temporal bone. This is the head of the mandible and this is the fibrous capsule and this is the tendon of the lateral guide muscle. If we look at the articular disc, actually the articular disc has a very thick margins. The margins of the articular disc are very thick and they are called the peripheral annulus. On the inferior surface of the disc, there is a central depression and the central part of the disc is avascular. In this sagittal section, the disc appears to have an intermediate zone and a thickened anterior band and a posterior band. The anterior band extends anteriorly and is continuous through the fibrous capsule with the tendon of the lateral pterygoid muscle. The posterior band splits into an upper lamina of the posterior band that is attached to the scamotempanic fissure and a lower lamina of the posterior band that is attached to the back of the condyle of the mandible. So there is a bilaminar region. This bilaminar region contains venous plexus. In sagittal section, the articular disc of the temporomandibular giant presents five different parts. 
five different parts from before backwards. The anterior extension, the anterior thick band, the intermediate zone, the posterior thick band, and the posterior bilaminal region. So these are the parts of the intra-articular disc. Now we will study the ligaments of the temporomandibular giant. The first one is the fibrous capsule. Then comes the lateral ligament or temporomandibular ligament. This is the lateral ligament or the temporomandibular ligament. Then comes the sphenomandibular mandibular ligament. This is the sphenomandibular ligament and this one is the stylomandibular ligament. So the fibrous capsule and the lateral ligament and the sphenomandibular ligament and the stylomandibular ligament. The sphenomandibular ligament and the stylomandibular ligaments are called the accessory ligaments of the temporomandibular giant. Now we will discuss them. First the fibrous capsule. The fibrous capsule is attached above to the articular tubercle, to the circumference of the articular fossa and to the squamotempanic fissure. And it is attached below to the neck of the mandible. There is a disc in the middle of the temporomandibular giant and the capsule is loose above the disc and tight below the disc. The inner aspect of the fibrous capsule is lined by the synovial membrane. After the fibrous capsule, we will study the lateral ligament or the temporomandibular ligament. It is a true ligament which is formed as a result of thickening of the lateral aspect of the capsular ligament. Its fibers are directed downward and backward. It is attached above to the articular tubercle and the zygomatic bone and below it is attached to the posterior lateral aspect of the neck of the mandible. The lateral ligament strengthen the lateral aspect of the capsule. Now we will discuss the accessory ligaments that is the sphenomandibular ligament and the stylomandibular ligament. The sphenomandibular ligament this one is attached above to the spine of the sphenoid bone and it is attached below to the lingula. It is attached below to the lingula and the margins of the mandibular foramen. It is attached above to the spine of the sphenoid and below to the lingula and the margins of the mandibular foramen. This ligament is coming from a much deeper plane as compared to the capsular giant, capsular ligament and the lateral ligament. If you look at this, this ligament is coming like this and this is going medially, not lateral to this ramus, it is, this is going medially. This is actually, they have shown the medial aspect because the mandibular foramina and lingula is on the medial surface of the ramus of the mandible, not on the lateral surface. So this is the medial surface if we go from there on the medial side. So it is attached to the lingula and the margin of the mandibular foramen. This ligament is taught when we protrude the mandible. Protrusion means when we bring forward the mandible, then this ligament is taught. Now the other ligament is the stylomandibular ligament. As the name indicates, it is attached above to the lateral surface of the styloid process and below 
to the angle of the mandible and to the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible to the angle and posterior border of the ramus of the mandible this ligament is formed due to thickening of the investing layer of the deep, deep cervical fascia the deep cervical fascia between the stylized process and the angle of the mandible thickens to form the stylo mandibular ligament and what this ligament ligament does this separates the submandibular gland from the parotid gland it separates the two gland the submandibular and the parotid gland and this ligament is start when we protrude the jaw when we bring forward the jaw what these accessory ligament do they actually control the range of motion occurring at the temporomandibular joint the accessory ligaments control the range of motion of the temporomandibular joint and this is this ligament this sphenomandibular ligament and the stylomandibular ligament with these ligaments and the, the mandible this form a swing it swings like this so it is a swing so these are the accessory ligaments of the temporomandibular joint this is the swing formed by the accessory ligaments of the temporomandibular joint this swing formed by the accessory ligaments and the mandible and this thus they control the range of movement of the temporomandibular joint now we will talk about the relations of the temporomandibular joint and clearly it is related to the tendon of the lateral trigeminal muscle and the mesenteric nerve and vessels and laterally it is related to skin then the parotid gland and then the temporal branches of the facial nerve this is the oblique section taken through the temporomandibular joint so this is medial part the pharyngeal wall and this is lateral wall and this is lateral part and this is the temporomandibular joint the temporal bone and the mandible so medially it is related to the auricular temporal nerve it is related to the middle meningeal artery it is related to the spine of the sphenoid and this then the sphenomandibular ligament and cauda tympani and also the tympanic plate separating it from the internal carotid artery which cannot be seen here the posterior relations are the superficial temporal vessels and the auricular temporal nerve so these are the posterior relations of the temporomandibular joint now we will discuss the various muscles causing movements at the temporomandibular joint the first movement is protrusion let us see the muscles causing protrusion this is the lateral trigeminal muscle it is applying force in the forward direction so it will take the lower jaw forward and will cause protrusion this is the medial trigeminal muscle it is applying force in the forward and upward direction and if we resolve this force into its component it will have a horizontal component directed forward which will take the lower jaw forward and will cause protrusion so protrusion is caused by the lateral trigeminal assisted by the medial trigeminal now the other movement is retraction this is that is taking the lower jaw backward let us see the muscles which cause retraction the posterior fibers of the temporal muscle cause retraction the force of the posterior fibers is directed upward and backward and if we resolve this force into its component it has a horizontal component directed backward and this will take the lower jaw backward and will cause a retraction
the other muscle causing retraction is the digastric muscle the direction of force the digastric muscle is applying is in this direction it has an anterior belly a pulley and a posterior belly so the digastric muscle is applying force in the downward and backward direction its horizontal component will be directed backward which will take the lower jaw backward and will cause retraction another muscle is the genohyoid which is between the geno chin and the hyoid bone its force is also directed downward and backward and its horizontal component is also directed backward which will take the lower jaw backward and will cause retraction so retraction is caused by the posterior fibers of the temporalis muscle the digastric muscle and the genohyoid muscle coming to the next movement that is elevation taking the lower jaw upward so if we look at the tempor temporalis muscle the force is directed in this direction and the vertical component of this force is taking is directed upward so it will take the jaw upward and will cause elevation coming to the medial tegigaid muscle it also has a vertical component directed upward and it will also take the lower jaw upward and will cause elevation this is mesiter muscle it also has it is also applying force in this in this direction and its vertical component is directed upward and it will also take the jaw upward and will cause elevation so elevation is caused by the temporalis muscle the medial tegigaid and the lateral the, the mesiter the medial tegigaid and the mesiter the temporalis muscle the medial tegigaid and the mesiter they are cause causing elevation that is taking the lower jaw upward now the final movement that is depression taking the lower jaw downward depression is obviously causing caused by gravity also but the muscles causing depression are the these muscles the digastric muscle the genohyoid muscle, muscle muscle and the mylohyoid muscle the digastric muscle the force is directed downward and backward and its vertical component is directed downward and will take the lower jaw downward and will cause depression the genohyoid also is, is in the same plane the genohyoid is attached to the geno mean the chin and the hyoid bone and its force is also directed downward and backward and its vertical component is directed downward will will take the jaw downward and will cause depression another is mylohyoid which is attached between the mandible and the hyoid bone and its force is directed downward and it will take the lower jaw downward and these muscles the mylohyoid the digastric and the genohyoid these are called the suprahyoid muscles the muscles above the hyoid bone the side to side movement is carried out by the medial tegigaid and the lateral tegigaid of one side and the opposite side alternatively so these are the movement occurring at the temporomandibular joint and the muscle causing these movements coming to the neurovascular supply the blood supply of the temporal mandibular joint come from the maxillary artery the superficial temporal artery the articular twigs of these artery enter the posterior aspect of the capsule and the nerve supply is from the auricular temporal nerve its articular twig enter the joint from its posterior aspect and other is the mesenteric nerve its articular twigs enter the joint from its anterior aspect so this is the neurovascular supply of the temporomandibular joint